Game number one of Fusion versus Orange Juices. I'm gonna make some juice. Oh, that's the plan anyway for Orange Pulp Juices. <laughs> Pop up. <laughs> All right, so what's going to be on the table here for bands? Hoopa, obviously, this has been the probably the most banned Pokemon at the tournament yep. so far. 44.6%. Garchomp, secondary ban, exactly the same as their previous Ooh. game, but side the ban from Orange Juices. Okay. Love the respect ban, but this yeah. does let the bliss see through. It does let the bliss see through. I don't think we're first picking that ever. No, yeah, Kayla is going to lock down the blaze again. Now, if you can get this blissy Umbreon combo that is so good on that first pick of the orange side, oh. they are going to deviate from that strategy a little. It'll be Machizel taking the Gyarados alongside Zelgrug's Umbreon. So they may give up the Blissey in this scenario, but having the Umbreon as that natural counter already ready is going to be huge. Yeah, and even Fusion, they kind of flick through the, the Blissey as well, thinking, what do they want to do? Mammoth Swine, so locking in their Defender first and the Cerule Edge as well. So double all-rounders so far on the side of Fusion, really wanting to brawl with all of these mid-game brawlers. Okay, now Roland's hovering the Eldegoss right now, but this is one of those niche cases where maybe we could see the Wigglytuff. It, it is a crazy call out, <laughs> I know, but the natural counter to Serilege is that Pokemon, that recital being able to cleanse the hits. But no, Mime? we're gonna see some crazy stuff Let's in go. its own right though. It will be the Mr. Mime from Roland locked in. All right, a bit of anti-dive to go along that Bladeskin and Serilege, a decent option here. Anti-dive and remarkably a strong laning su support pair. Yeah. One of the things that makes Mr. Mime so scary in lane is that he has KO potential. You don't mess around with this uh, Pokemon, regardless of whether it's called a support or not. I actually think this dude is a defender slash all-rounder. He's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he really covers all the bases I on know. this Mr. Mime. That is true. And the final selection is going to be Flareons on the Inteleon. Ooh. One of these picks that makes me so, so excited. Flareons, we were talking to that player yesterday about their games on main stage, and they said they specifically didn't play it the nerves were just hitting a little yeah. too shaky and they were like I, I just don't think I'm gonna hit my shots but, but today's the this day. selection is showcasing Flareons is locked in ready to go and has found that confidence they need to push forward in this tournament there's a lot in front of them they're gonna have to take down but that Mimikyu to try to counter into some of these melee brawlers the Gyarados with that huge knock up Unite move is really solid and it's gonna be up to Flareons to start a lot of these team fights with that long range poke yeah I think also adding on to that as well maybe feeling very safe with his team's draft as well because sure. he's got a lot of teammates he can fall back to if he needs that assistance lots of aggressive potential but also defensive plays if they have to turn around and help out flareon so the question here for fusion obviously they have to deal with the front line but how do they get to flareons how do you get to that intellion when you have to deal with that mr mime the Gyarados, the Umbreon, I feel like the Umbreon will be a pretty pivotal Pokemon and making sure that Flareons is gonna be tip top shape for the exactly. majority of the game. Yeah, it is gonna be a hard Pokemon to dive into. I, I I was talking with a few of the Orange Juicers member and as a composition, when I asked why we didn't see the Inteleon, a part of it is, is we saw a lot of Flareons on the Cramorant. Cramorant basically good in any kind of composition. It fits nicely. And Teleon needs a little bit more room to work, like you were mentioning. Umbreon will be able to buy that space. And of course, there's not a whole lot of dive necessarily on Fusion, depending on how they play some of these all-rounders, that is. Yep, so it looks like Roland's gonna be coming in to that central area to provide assistance for his teammate to make sure that they're able to get that red buff for them. So not stolen at all. But Kia, Draken, they have other plans. If they can get a knockout here or just steal away this experience, delay this central area, this is going to be a big win for Fusion. Love the aggressive plays, but in the meantime, though, a Torchic in the top lane is actually getting knocked out. Yeah, I mean, that is going to be a ton of it, even just effort gauge for that oh. magic card. But they're going to see XP. very close to the evolution. But yeah, XP2 get away. Draken will eject button, but they will not escape the Shadow Claw. And Kratos will wow, take two double. KOs, doubling them up. OJ starting strong. Yeah, I don't think you want to be giving away a double knockout to a Mimikyu this early on. So obviously Kratos 
make the most of this early laning stage. Crush those lanes because if you want to win the lanes, best time to do it right now. But with the Cerule Edge counter knockout, completely stopping that momentum that we just picked up from that central area in Vayd. And honestly, kind of huge that Zynus was able to pick up the KO on the Chandelure. They've been stuck as a Litwick for quite some time, having to lane against that Mr. Mime, very challenging. But with getting that knockout, they're already back to that land. Pins at level five, caught up in the experience race. Yeah. Ooh. Roland just gonna hang around with his team as well, just to have that wall ready in case they had that opportunity to maybe lock someone in. but. Haven't found anyone, although they're gonna run into that lamp and even ejecting forward, locking them into that wall. They have the damage. Oh, the Drizzile just coming in with the snipes. I feel like Inteleon is gonna make a comeback to Worlds this year because this Pokemon has disappeared after a couple of those nerfs, but it is so great at those early game rotations because of the burst damage it has. Yeah, if it disappeared, it's just because of that passive. It is now visible yet again with the way it's been dominating some of these Worlds games. That burn damage could be a little bit too much for Kratos to get a score, but they'll jump right back in with the damage. Orange Juicer is gonna break the first gold zone of the game. Fusion with an answer on the top side, but they will not be catching up to the score line of OJ. I'm not sure if you're gonna be feeling too good here for Fusion because your lanes are not looking too bad. Level-wise, they're looking really good for this Cerule Edge, but they're gonna have to try and get this Combuscan and Lambert to catch up. They need to get that experience that they can hit their peaks and eventually fight into Orange Juices. We do see a knockout here onto that Mr. Mime roll and just being a nuisance on the enemy side of the map there, but providing crucial vision. Yep. I think this is something that is not really spoken about in, in Pokemon Unite, but sometimes just having your support play so far forward, providing your vision, telling you where the Chandelure is, where that Pilus Wine is. Are you safe to do that bottom objective or are they rotating down? And because Roland did that, gave them that clear opening to just take the bottom objective. Yep, Regieleki is happening in that top lane, but can they defend with just these two? Or oh, actually walks in. Um, bit questionable there. Uh, it's all right. They got tons of stoppage, right? They have the foul play plus the Mr. Mime. I mean, they're locking this gold zone down. A small score will happen. But if that's all they're able to get in with a Reggie Alecki defenseless wow. pull, unbelievable defense from Orange Juicers, foul play from Sugrug, and all those mine barriers from Roland work fantastic to stop the mobility of all of Fusion's Pokemon. The bait working out really well here for Orange Juicers. And <laughs> there's only so much Elder Gods can do by themselves to try and stop this. But can they get the counter KOs and Gary? Gyarados knockout would be very nice here, but it might just end up being nothing at all. So no knockouts for Fusion, no experience. That was a T1 goal zone for free. Yeah, T1 goal zone for free, and Flareons was able to get a back cap in bottom side as well, while that battle around the tier two with the Regia like he was going on. So the score pattern for Orange Juicers has been fantastic. Really holding on to this macro game and putting on that pressure. The levels are scary for Fusion, though. We have the level 10 Cerulege and, of course, the level 9 Blaziken. Animo and Tempo are two of the most dangerous mechanical players we have in our game. You always got to be wary when they're on these power picks. Yeah, got to really play behind their team orange juices. Don't get caught out. Don't give them that free experience so far. Just this two Pokemon defending successfully. This Umbreon hanging on. They're even going to be using the Unite there. But, oh, they managed to get the Cerule Edge. I think this is where orange juices, can they continue with this push? Oh, my gosh. Flareons, he got a bit of a snipe there, but he goes down. He got caught by the Pilot Swine. And the Unite being used because of the evolution. Rolling thrown into the air as well. Gyarados going down. Fusion, can they burn through this? They really want this goal zone. I, I'm not going to lie. I think going after the Inteleon there is a mistake from Fusion. They allow Mr. Mime just to walk all over their back line. You might knock out that main source of damage in the back, but after that, you have nothing to push forward, and it will be Orange Juicers able to take that team fight victory and the Reggie Rock. Rolling on this Mr. Mime is a legendary player. They've stopped goal zone pushes. They've won team fights on their own at this point. I mean, oh. Orange Juicers are so thankful for this roster right now. They're looking so good. Rolling, be rolling on this Mr. Mime, and we could even potentially see a Mr. Mime ban It's not weak and tough, game. but it's fine. It's, it's, it's the same color. It's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> up top, we do have Reggie Alecki being stopped by that Gyarados mid lane, though. Oh, Flare 
Inteleon's getting caught there. Should it really be that far out as that Inteleon? Pretty questionable play, though, but they have been spotted by the Umbreon, starting out with the Snarl, catching out multiple Pokemon, three players on the side of Orange Juices, trying to protect that Teal One Gold Zone Union using the Unite as well. Roland buying time for the team to come in. We do have the Gyarados coming in with the Unite as well, but who do they want to catch out? They get three Pokemon. One for one so far. They have lost their defender, Blazing, and trying to escape that Gyarados in the back lines, though. Knockout after knockout. Orange Juices are squeezing Fusion Dry. We are looking at a whole new Orange Juices roster in day number two. I mean, this is a completely different look from last we saw this team. A 227 point scoreline to just 177. They are winning so many of these team fights, and Roland is leading the way. Huge lockdown. That Mr. Mime showtime blocking any score and setting up all those fights. And the patience from a chisel on that Gyarados. Just <laughs> being that da-da-da-da Jaws theme around below all those targets. Knifing under everyone. Yeah. Unreal. Finds those three peats. And of course the team fight victory after that. Orange juicers looking good. And ooh, nice little shadow sneak kid on Kea. Yeah, so catching out a little bit of vision there. We still have 40 seconds to go before we hit that last two-minute stretch. So, got to play it safe here, folks. Don't want to get any more knockouts. No preemptive Unites. This is the time that you want to try and get your Unites back online so you're ready for that final fight. Now, down bottom, it's just a red dice. No attack buff, no defensive buff. This is huge for Fusion. And if they can rip through this Regieleki, which they certainly can with all this damage, this is going to have to be something that Orange Juices needs to work on. Do they deal with the Aleki or do they want to position around the Rayquaza pit? And it looks like positioning is key here. Yeah, you have to get positioning right now. You don't want to fight for position with an Inteleon base composition. You want to have that army set up and built and ready to go. Kratos is going to hang out on jump pad just in case anybody is going to try to score in that defenseless goal zone. The rest of the roster, they have that point lead. It might not be huge, but they do know they're holding on to it. Share Ledge does score 58, but that's going to be immediate dive from from Kratos on the Mimikyu. Revenant Rand goes down, so that's a huge Unite move already gone. Uh-oh. Fighting, but they need to go down. Uh-oh. There's a bunch of shields. Mammal Swine gonna try to stomp all over them, but Chisel and Sulgrog are 2v3 right now, but Roland is joining the fight. Oh, he's coming in. Roland be rolling there with the Unite yet again. One for one so far. Support down for that Mimikyu, but the oh. Gyarados bounce. They catch the Cerulege. We're looking at a three versus four matchup in this Rayquaza pit. And now it looks like Orange Juices, they want to take the Rayquaza for themselves. But Fusion, can they snipe this away? Can they slow them or stop them down? The Chandelure stuck with that Umbreon. They don't want to get that steal off at all. Who gets the last hit? It's the Inteleon Flareons. Oh. What a combo play from Kratos and Flareon. So good. Blaziken, the one threat to that Rayquaza. He still had HP, walked up to that main objective. But Flareon gets the play with me unite, locks them down, and tees Flareon's up for an easy snipe shot secure. Orange Juicers going to start this match 1-0. Starting one and O oh, team morale. I'm seeing some big smiles on those player cams as well. So <laughs> going into game number two, you know, feeling this positive. They're gonna now have to figure out what do we do for game number two? Because clearly fusions, they are gonna have to come up with a solution for this next game. 100%. Do let that do they let Flareons play the Inteleon again? Do they change their own team composition? Because I kind of feel I don't think you can play Blaziken and Cerule Edge on a team together. They are too demanding. I actually think they need something a little bit quicker here. All right, well, <laughs> I, uh, I, I I don't know if I'm that less confident than you, but yeah. hey, uh, <laughs> they can make it work. Those well, Pokemon are both extremely strong. It was, I, I truly feel in this particular matchup, it was also the fact that Mr. Mime existed. Oh. The draft up here, folks. So game number two between Fusion and Orange Juices, we are good to go. What is being banned? Are we seeing any new bands hit the field for these two teams? And Hooper, this one is to be expected. Slowbro will continue to be banned in this series. Garchomp is still going to be hitting the field here for Fusion, Orange Juices, and Scyther. All Respect right. bands, same as game number one. Yeah, we run those back. Okay, so Orange Juicers are obviously feeling pretty happy about this situation. Last time in this spot, Fusion picked up the Blaziken, and we're going to run that back. So, a powerful Pokemon, obviously in its own right. Flareons don't 
don't tease my heart with the Gengar hover, please. That would have been fantastic. But we are going to see an exact same draft so far. It in works this so phase. well. Yeah, I mean, it looks great, right? So Umbreon, Gyarados is going to be those first picks on the orange side for orange juices. Yeah, look, it worked in game number one. Run it back. And I feel like Gyarados is so versatile as well that he really fits in a lot of team compositions, especially with how Mishizzle very team-oriented player. He's not a greedy Gyarados. He's always thinking about where his teammates are, how he can set up for his teammates as well. So Gyarados, great picks. Flareon's back on the Inteleon. Buzzball coming up here for Fusion. So it looks like we're going to keep seeing this Brawl coming up from Fusion, but they really want to go all in for the lockdown. And are they just going to say, we're going to build our team so tanky that we kind of don't care about this Mr. Mime? Yeah, that is so interesting. They're going to take a lot of poke damage from this Inteleon with no threat to the backline again. Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty early selection. They were hovering Dodrio for a moment. I'm kind of shocked we're not going that way. But it will be the Buzzwall this time from Tempo. So certainly a harder lane opponent for the Magikarp to go into in this game. And final selection is it really for Daddy? North America. It oh is my going to be Garido, or Garido. <laughs> It is going to be Garnivore. <laughs> We got 2G Pokemon on the team. Totally understand. But I, I'm i trying to think for orange juices. So what it, what's the thought process of running a Gardevoir and an Inteleon on the same team comp? Because yes, you do have three very good frontline Pokemon, but is Kratos basically here existing to power up and set up for Flareons? Um, potentially, it's Unite Movers also unbelievable into that enemy composition, lots right? Lots of, yeah, uh, lots of melee looking at a bulked up, up team Pokemon. that wants to run as a unit. One Fairy Singularity is going to lock down so many targets there. I think the other thing is, in game number one, Orange Juice was kind of dive-checked fusion. We yeah. were like, hey, can you get to our Inteleon? The answer was no, with that composition of Sarah Ledge Blaziken. Now that it's Buzzwool Blaziken, I believe the answer is going to be the same. They're like, fine, we'll pick two attackers because we're safe back here. Roland and Zugrug are locking down that front line for us. We'll be totally fine. If we need a big engage, that'll be up to Machism. Well, let's see how these lanes are going to be here, folks. Game number two. Teams are locked and loaded. Are we going to see a game number three? Or will Orange Juices keep the NA flag and wave it high and continue their journey through the Pokemon Unite World Championships? And I think most importantly, knock out one of the favorites to win the entire tournament. Very much possible, but we're talking about fusion here. We could see a game number three. Yeah, this is a team that has been dominant all season long, so you can never count them out in the round of 16. To see them exit, I think will be a shock to so many players and fans from around the world. And Emo gonna go to try to get some scores in on this Buzzwall, but it wants to out-contest Machizel, who is able to secure that Bunnelby in the face of a Buzzwall, so impressive stuff. Buzzwall not having the best levels one through four, definitely starts seeking higher spots once they hit that level five. Yeah, Mish Mishizel just looks so comfortable. Playing yeah. Magikarp into Buzzwall of all things. Like, this is not a matchup that you would see someone be be able to steal away that last hit. But Anemo, we've seen this player just absolutely blaze things yesterday. So I don't think that's going to phase him at all. He's just getting his levels, getting his experience, getting ready for that first little skirmish. And it looks like top lane will be the priority as well for Orange Juices. So we could be looking at a pretty big brawl. Yeah, I think both these teams, if their central area clears are alone, they are going to prioritize this top side. Big barrier stun. Blaze Kick tries to kidnap Roland, who's taking a they ton got of damage. Him. Super power offensively from Anemo, lands up both Kratos and Machizel. Not enough damage to double up on any of those KOs, but they clear a ton of space. 30 points go in for Anemo. Yeah, there's not really much. They have actually got the Curlia. Oh my gosh, Anemo surprise knockout there on the central laner. That really hurts Orange Juices because that's going to basically stop that defensive push coming in from that uh, central area. Although, look, we've got a Drizzle coming in. Flareons wants to come in and help, but he has to be careful because if Anemo gets him, they get the knockout. Drizzle oh. rotated for this. Anemo wants even more in oh a KO Streak of Two. What a response from Fusion. For those of you counting at home, by the way, Anemo is currently, and if they score this, six attack weight stacks. Anemo, this is terrifying. Six stacks, 
this early on, I don't think you can touch this top lane anymore. Oh, man. I mean, at the very least, we have the Gyarados. So Machizel does evolve at some point in that brawl. So maybe all those resources worth it. But at this point, Buzzwool is stacked back to the maximum amount, and they are going to be swinging for the fence. Chandelure Evolution, after they clear out some of that central area, it has been Tempo and Zainu splitting the EXP back there between the Sarah Ledge and the Blaze again for the majority of this match. Speaking of experience, Fusion looking at a massive experience lead. Two level eight Pokemon on their side, whereas we only have the Curlia sitting at that level seven here for Orange Juices. So unfortunately, that little bit of a kerfuffle in that top lane really not helping them in that experience department. They might have to slow things down a little bit just to play catch up because Machizel's not looking too confident here anymore. And Nemo just looking too big on this Ultra Beast. Yeah, interesting. Ooh, Anemo kind of faking going to break that goal zone, wants to get some more points. Now is threatening 28, but if they're going to dive in, that is going to be so challenging. Trying to make that choice between getting Reggie Alecki to break the goal zone or them. Very, very difficult, but they are going to break it and level send Reggie Alecki towards tier two. This old, he's level nine, and Nemo is so big. And level eight is the highest level, now level nine, on the side of orange juices, but down bottom. This is going to cause quite a bit of issues, especially if Anemo decides to go, but he's actually rotating up top instead, wanting to push with that Reggie Alecki. And Mishizel, not looking too happy there. The Mr. My Wall basically stopping him from crossing back into that lane. But look at this Buzzwall. He's hunting. He wants to eat something, and I think it might be a Gyarados. Yeah, fish on the menu potentially. Flying fish, a rare one, but Mishizel is going to try to escape. Early bounce. They won't have the unstoppable to try to dodge any oh of these grabs. And Anemo's going to get that full combo. Machizel Level down 10. yet again. He's level 10. This guy looking unstoppable in this early to mid game. And if he continues to snowball like this, I'm not sure how Orange Juices is going to be able to easily eliminate this Buzzwell from the fights. They will maybe have to overcommit Unites to catch him out. Down bottom, though, they've actually decided to commit their whole team down here for this Reg Ice. It's not an attack or defensive Reg Ice. It's just going to be the heal bonus. But they will get it. They need this experience so, so badly. And they're going to try and push with this as well. Ooh, nice barrier stop on Zainus. Tees up for two slime shots in a row. And Flareons is going to finally get on the KO board. Tons of scores going to rain in from Orange Juicers now as they will break this goal zone as Anemo and Kea do have to retreat for a little bit and allow that space. The problem here for Orange Juicers is, though, that the entire time Tempo on this play skin was scoring in that tier two on top side. Scoring tier two top side, just basically getting everything that he needs to be that big powerhouse in that mid game. We're at the five minute mark here, folks. Halfway through the game, three minutes to go for that last two minute stretch. And things actually looking pretty even again. We're not looking at that very one sided experience heavy fusion. Orange Juice is doing a really great job catching up in the experience department and now rotating together into that top lane. Blaziken securing that Reggie Alecki. Gyarados is here though. Mishizel setting up by himself with the dragon current, but unfortunately caught up by a Nemo. So no knockout for him, but I think it's a clean disengage here. Mishizel bouncing out, but actually they're gonna commit. Yeah, Blaze is going to get the chase. That's a lot of damage from Flareons to back them up, though. And now Roland and Flareons need to commit to this fight. And Nemo going to get involved a little bit. Rotation around, trying to find Flareons. But Roland always there with the backup. Great barrier stun. Interesting choice from Orange Juice is there, right? Machizel sees an opportunity to dive onto the Blaze skin, but it's 1v4. Flareons rotates for support, but Mr. Mime and Gardevoir defending against the Reggie Alecki. I mean, a rare spot where it felt like the communication was a little off there from Orange Juicers, but they bring it back. Great coverage by Roland to protect Flareons, and now they got to regain for their next fight. Yeah, just got to keep things steady. Don't lose it, even after having a little bit of a rough start in that laning stage. They can make that recovery happen, but but uh, they got to make sure they don't lose the Guardi here. They have spouted out a Nemo, so no easy knockout on that central laner on the side of Orange Juices. Fusion. You can see Fusion. They want to make something happen. But the way the Orange Juices are playing, I love how defensively positioned they are so that mm -hmm. they're just not caught out for free. Yeah, it's so tough to play into a front-to-back team like this without a speedster. But hey, Whoa, great setup. Player on the team bank. that shot. What a slam shot. I mean, if they were nervous about missing their shots last time, I think they got all kinds of confidence this time around. So Grog will go down, though. A 1v, a 1v4 excursion is going to get punished. But those snipe shots are working out great for poke damage. We'll play 
Grayskin and Eldegoss are extremely hurt right now. Mammoth Swine dies on the two, locks down the Kratos, but they are going to get away. Registeel, though, is going to be secured by Fusion. Secured by Fusion. I did see Flareons try to go for the charge there, but just too little too late, unfortunately, with the positioning. Up top, though, looks like Reggie Alecki may be the next objective here, spawning right now, and obviously, Fusion, if they can grab that, this will be a big hindrance to Orange users because they have to deal with this Reggie Alecki. And with Rayquaza coming online so soon, you want to spend your time now getting that experience. And if you can get a stray knockout, that's great as well, but you really want that experience. But the experience game is currently in favor of Fusion with two level 13s, and Nemo and Blazik at level 13. They're ready to go, but actually, Orange Juices, their cores are all level 13 as well, so they're good to go. Yeah, after an explosive start, Fusion's actually been pretty quiet they for most of the out. mid game, right? Orange Juicers not necessarily taking over the matchup, but certainly gaining momentum and gaining a whole lot of levels. We've hit the final stretch. If at the end of this, Orange Juice is a victorious, Fusion goes home. If Fusion win this, we go to a game number three. Rayquaza's on the map. Yeah, Fusion need to be very decisive with their jump. And actually, Nemo is to knock out. He dove in and he got deleted. That is massive. Four versus five. This is not the matchup Fusion want, but you can see Orange Juice, they also want that Rayquaza. They're forcing Fusion to fight. They say, if you don't fight into us, we want that Rayquaza. Zagro has gone down in the back lines. So Intellion oh. working on that Blaziken, and melting them down. The Mammoth Swine, they're all on their oh, own. Yeah. No backup there. Flareons is hitting every shot. He chased down that blade skin. That's such an important KO to get. And he also done a ton of poke damage on that Serilich. Now he's on an ever-present threat. But Chisel is able to Anemo's ignore back. all that Anemo grab and escape. The it walls. About down to half HP. Flareons is not getting body blocked. Puzzle trying to he get it away. Artifor unites, setting it up. Snipe shot's already used, and it will be oh. fusion, fusion securing it. Serilich take the ray. They get the ray, they get the double knockout as well. Can they break the shields? Can they do anything? We have Zagrug outrunning that Blaziken in that bottom lane. Roland as well as the Gardevoir wanting to defend that bottom lane as well. But someone has to defend that home base. Break Draken shield. Don't let him score. And they don't let him score at all. That's only 30 seconds left though. Another 100 in from Boswell. Another 100 in from Tempo. And that is going to seal the deal. 20 seconds remain in our match, and we are going to be going to a game number three in this knockout round. That was such a close Rayquaza fight. The fact that it really came down to just who got that final hit, and the fact that Zulich, oh my gosh, the final, the final hit. Orange juices, they just needed something to land to secure that Rayquaza, but they just didn't have it in them. Yeah, the Gardevoir. I think you can have too many expectations for that lane matchup. It was just, I think those unlucky knockouts, like getting caught and essentially feeding that Boswell, that early game experience. I think that that's where Anemo really ran away with the game. If he didn't get that early game experience, I think we'd be looking at a much vastly different game in that previous matchup. It was just, he got too much too soon and basically snowballed out of control. Yeah, 100%. All right, we're probably going to be looking at very similar picks in this game. I mean, the bands are identical. I don't see any reason for Fusion to be shifting things up here. It will be a Blaziken locked in. Now, Orange Juicers are going to grab the Umbreon. I would really like this Blissey, but Machizel is just feeling this Gyarados. They are going to lock it in three games in a row. Got to make sure that they can somehow stabilize his lane. Get him that early Gyarados if possible. But again, it's fusion. And the way that they always run that top lane, Animo, if they've got to find a favorable matchup. And I don't really know how you want to do this. If you pick an Eldegoss, just really push hard in that top lane, get a strong central laner. Flareons, hovered over the Mew, back onto the Inteleon. What is the play here? Do they keep going with the Inteleon? I think Flareon's Inteleon has been great. I don't think it, you really changed that. It has been, but because of Fusion's draft strategy here, it makes it a tougher pick. They take the Chandelure and the Mammoth Swine earlier than they have so far in their drafting phase, and they threaten Speedsters with their final picks. So oh. all of a sudden, it makes it very difficult for Flareon's to lock that down. Final selections for, Flair, uh, for Fusion are going to be coming in now. It will be the Eldegoss and the Buzzwool. So, Anemos Buzzwool is going to make it back two games in a row. 
Kratos currently hovering the Urshifu. I actually think this would be a great answer to what has been going on, but that Chandelure matchup can be pretty difficult. I'm expecting Kratos to play very heavy into the top side. It play heavy into the top side, and I think they need to send somebody in that central area. Guaranteed that central area experience, get that level five, yeah. and then you start running down those lanes. Because if you're fusion, and you look at this team so far, you're looking at that Urshifu and saying, guys, I actually think we just try and go for an invade. Slow down his fire because what are you going to do? There's a Magic Up in the top lane. Magic Up's not going to even do anything in that top lane. Bottom, okay, Flareons might rotate as that Drizzile, but dr he wants that experience too. Mm, so yeah. I think if you're Orange Juices, stabilize your lanes. Get the experience on Kratos first, then focus on Mishizzle because Flareons, he's been so consistent in that bottom lane. He doesn't need help. He is such an independent laner, which I feel like makes him such a top-tier player for this team. That is true. He has looked amazing, as have both of these rosters. And now we are headed to a game number three elimination match here in Worlds. Honolulu makes some noise for Orange Juicers and Fusion. One team goes home, one team moves on. Oh, no. I don't even know who goes home at this point. Both of these teams deserve to go through, but... Someone has to open the door and basically <laughs> just watch. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're in the moment of World Championships where heartbreaks happen, but of course dreams also come true, which is a, a, you know, a fun after effect as well. Zainu's on the Chandler, gonna head into that bottom path like we talked about again. Pretty tough early lane matchup for them in particular. And look at this, straight in Vakir's like, guys, we need to stop this urge if possible, but Roland, Roland's doing his job. He knows he has to stop this. Even Zugrug is coming in because this little swine up, he wants to steal that experience. If he can KO Kratos here, that'll be even better. But with the assistance of Zugrug, Draken's gonna have to make a clean getaway because he's running out of health. All right, so an identical strategy to game number two from Fusion with the double invade. Both the Gossip Floor and the Swine Up try to make it to the enemy central area. Not much taken away, but of course, we still don't have an Urshifu, so I think we have to count that as a success. Count it as a big success because it does open up those side lanes for Fusion to really do whatever they want. But now hitting level five, what's the choice of lane here? Are we going to be seeing Kratos go top lane or bottom? Definitely top lane. They want to get the shizzle into that Gyarados as quick as possible, but they're gonna miss that first wave of Swabble and Altaria. Yeah, oh! Favoring the KO. Oh. It could blow lined up as well. It's Dark Bear as Kratos who swings in the chisel, trying to get close to oh, take credit for this KO. Paul and Puff gonna do a bit of burst of damage, and KO will take the Oh my god! Anemo gosh. grabs a wild Pokemon and uses that as the KO tool for them. Anemo, Simple, yeah. KO, all work together, and that's a Lampant rotation for the final touch of damage. Fusion win that first team tuck. I think we just witnessed an Elder God moment. Kia just sitting there, basic attacking. Yes, Animo was the target there, but the damage output. This is why Elder Goss is considered a top tier support, can just do so much in the laning stage and really assist with those knockouts. And for Orange Juices, for that engagement in the top lane to go sour. This is not good news at all. Ah, pretty brutal. Flareon's gonna try to make a cool little play with the jack button, but the water gun gonna go wide. They don't get the KO onto the lamp pants. Tempo has not hit level seven yet, whereas Kratos has hit that benchmark. And this Urshifu is going to be a terrifying threat to deal with. This is the first time in this matchup that uh, Orange Juicers have drafted extremely good secure Pokemon in their central area. So the Rayquaza fight has definitely become a more of a priority as we go into game number three as Orange Juicers focusing on a bit more of objective mindedness. Yeah, interesting decision here. We'll have to see if it pays off for them because Wicked Blow, I, I kind of have some questions when it comes to this kind of version of you, but if they can make it work, absolutely go for it. And that Wicked Blow, securing the knockout onto the defender. So nice little boost of experience, but also eliminating one of the frontliners for Fusion. All right, they take him down. Reggie is going to be spawning on the bot side of this map. Orange Juicers with a heavy focus and with Inteleon and Urshifu. Those are two extremely difficult Pokemon to answer. Big slight shot, tease up Kratos, who does close out that KO. Overheat is going to take it. Tempo with great positioning, both body blocking the Snipe Shot and setting up for the secure. And that's Fusion with the first Reggie. 
Fusion stealing that Reggie away. They did get a knockout for that, but I'm not really sure if that's the trade you're really asking for in that bottom fight because this attack buff just means Fusion can take over this tier one gold zone unless they can somehow stop them. They do bring the Urshifu back. Snipeshot missing, unfortunately, just landing on an empty wall. Kratos, though, thinking. Wanting to go engage. Zagrug hunting as well, but they just can't find that opening. But actually, no, they caught the ocean crew with the Ice Fang. We'll be able to get out with the Throat Chop. Now Zagrug being chased, but I think the fight is just going to end here. The, these openings are so small, and if Orange Juices can't capitalize on it the moment it happens, they just seem to lose it from there on. Yeah, this bottom path has been pretty patient from Orange Juice. It's been focusing more on defending this goal zone rather than oh, trying to get they making found the Italian. Chase, pulls them away, but Flareus is going to make it away for a moment, <laughs> but that is going to be the chase down all the way to the other side. Tempo does get the knockout with the overheat, and despite the Urshifu Unite, Fusion is hanging on. Zulgrug trying to defend this goal zone. It's 1v3. But the rest of Orange Juicers are trying to defend against the Reggie Alecki in the top side. Fusion are taking over this game. Fusion are running down this game in both lanes. The fact that they've split their forces and regardless of what's happened, Orange Juice is really struggling on both fronts. It just really goes to show that that mishap in the early game is now really coming back to bite them in this mid game. They have to figure out a strategy to stabilize somehow, whether it be to go for, for some clever picks, the uh, diversion, go for those back caps because Looking at the goal zone situation, only 17 points have been scored by Orange Juices. They just haven't been able to touch Fusion's goal zones. Yeah, it's been brutal. Fusion's been winning the laning matchups, the flanks, the objective fights. Everything has been going in their favor in this game number two. They've eclipsed 200 points and were just sub of the five minute mark. Tempo does take a bit of poke damage and with no support to heal that back up, these snipe shots are very sticky right now. That's three members. Three, three different members hit with those snipe shots and now Finally, Eldegoss is going to join the fight. Kea gets in Kratos. Big Kratos engage. Oh. Yvonne Fist knocks off Tempo. They're going to try to earn that KO. Kratos will at least get the Chandelure, but the Mr. Mime Unite move is going to be leading the charge. Oh, Mishis are not feeling too happy here. He is too low. He needs some kind of healing. Tried to go for the aggressive bounce. Dragon current into the back, trying to catch Anemo. They will throw him in the air. Can they somehow turn this fight around? They're losing health bars, and that is it. They have no health left. Back to the Pokemon Center for you and Fusion continue their advance down Orange Juice's lanes. Yeah, Orange Juice was just seeming like they run out of momentum. They can't capitalize on some of these snipe shots. Oh. They got a big chance for a refight here, but it's Blaziken who strikes first. Finally, Flareon gets a KO. Anemo goes down. Also, Dragon on that Mammoth Swan falls next. But the Blaziken, oh my unstoppable gosh. tempo, finally goes down as Roland locks him down in every barrier he has, and Flareon tees it up with the snipe shot. Very, very costly fight for both teams there, but most importantly for Orange Juices, they get a big burst of experience, especially getting the elimination there onto that Blaziken. They need this experience so, so badly because the experience difference between these two, it's becoming too wide. It's almost reaching that critical mass point. Level 12 on two of the calls so far, looking pretty good with the comebacks, but they really need something else. They need a tiny bit more. They found the Chandelure, throws them in the air, they get that KO. That's going to be a nice stop, but this Urshifu is going to have to sacrifice himself for that knockout. All right, we trade those KOs, and now it's Tempo's turn to get involved in the fight. Dragon Current just waiting for that, Unite, for that animation to cancel. Bounce is going to get them out of range, and Zugrug will be trying to escort the team back, but they've just taken too much damage. They simply have to retreat. Flareons might go for a cheeky steal with the snipe shot, but that is their only chance at the Reggie Alecky. Everybody else on the run. Very nice body blocks as well coming out from that Blaziken just saying, no, no snipes for you, but this will need to be dealt with on the side of Orange Juices. If they let that Reggie Alecky through, you do not want to have any more points being scored. And oh my gosh, of all the Reggies to get coming into this final stretch, Reggie Steel, arguably the best Reggie buff to have going into that Ray fight. Orange Juicers have not secured a single Reggie all game, despite having Inteleon or Urshifu, Aleki or otherwise, they have not got one. And now, as the final stretch has began, Zugrug does find a Nemo alone. A Nemo? That's where they're going to engage. They're going to go all in. Super Swole Slam going to get them out of danger and increase the danger. Zugrug goes back to the Citrus Berry. Draken engages into multiple targets on the other side. Machizel charging up, but that will be the first KO. Zugrug goes down. Draken starts the fight.
Oh, not looking too good. You've lost one of your frontliners. You really need to have someone create that space so that the Intellion doesn't get caught. But Fusion, they know that they have their lead. It has to come down to Orange Juices to find that opening, but they've got to make sure they don't get chipped down whilst doing so. They just don't have that same level of sustain that Fusion have for these fights. Yeah, I mean, this Intellion has been fantastic for Flareons, doing so much poke damage, but simply they just don't have the options to chase. Ooh. Draken does try to Ice Fang, but an early throw Chop by Kratos will escape that lockdown of the crowd control. So now they are rotating around this Rayquaza. We're about to hit one minute Anemo? and time is running out. Anemo playing on that top side again. They Orange caught him. The hard call out. They will now have a 5v4 fight playing for their tournament lives. A minute left. Oh, they managed to catch a shot. The Lord with the bounce. They shizzle finding the attacker in the back line. Square with the United as well, dishing out the damage with the basic attacks, but they have lost the Urshifu. Their frontline of Flareons. He is free to do the basic attacks, fighting up against this Elder Gloss. Has to keep creating space. He has Roland there to provide the support. Zagrug, though, looking too low on that Umbreon. Basic attacks. They want the Rayquaza. Machizel is low. Flareons, can he secure for the He team? got it! He got it! Got it on the Italian. It must have been with an auto attack. Blazing was set up perfectly to body block that, but there's only 20 seconds remaining. Slugrug does Slugrug. have a full Rayquaza shield. This is going to be so tough for Orange Juicers. They need more than 100 points. Fusion is not a hold on this series. The time is running out. Slugrug cannot score. And that will be Fusion knocking out Orange Juicers. What a game. What a way to end that game. It looks so, so close. Oh so close for Orange Juicers, but just the Rayquaza, it came moments too late. Sure, you have the shields and it helps you score, but if it's an Inteleon and most of your team is gone, you still need to be protected. Yeah, I believe it was only Flareons and Selgrug receiving those Rayquaza shields, so just not quite enough firepower to bring it there. And Fusion able to run it down and get